Hello and welcome back to Talk It Out. I am Dan Mar. Alongside me is Evan Happy Masters and Eric Anderson. Uh, we are taking callers all day as we will be talking about baseball. Uh, just remember the call number is 123 Terminal C. That's 123 Terminal C, a capital C. We're talking about baseball all day today. Uh, some big things have been going on in the league right now. The trade deadline is right around the corner. Uh, second half baseball, all-star game is behind us. Everything is in the past now. Some really big teams making some pushes. Of course, there's the Dodgers with Machado. And uh, I want to start with you, Eric. What, uh, is, what is your big opinion so far? My biggest takeaway from the last week or so has been the Yankees getting Britain for basically not much. They've wasted over three prospects, and none of them was higher than their number nine. But in Britain is a multiple-time all-star reliever, adding to, in my opinion, the best bullpen in the bigs. And I just think they're poised to, them and the Red Sox have a, to, uh, to duke it out down the final stretch. Yeah, you bring up Britain, and it makes me even more upset of what my Mets did with Familia. Because, I, I mean, I, you could say they're some kind of comparable. I mean, Familia, maybe not as good as he was a couple years ago when he went on a massive save streak. But the Mets got a number 15 prospect and a reliever who has injury problems. That's all they got. And when I see what Brit the Orioles got for Britain from the Yankees, they got a couple good prospects. Not any great ones, but definitely more than what the Mets got in return, which kind of, if I'm a Mets fan like I am, I'd be upset. Well, Happy, I'd love to bring that point up. Uh, the Mets really have not been doing a whole lot during the trade, down, trade deadline so far this year. And there's a lot of talks that DeGrom may be on the move and star ace pitcher Noah Syndergaard. What do you think about that? I mean, they either have to go all in or not trade either of them because you can't just trade one and not trade the other because then you're kind of, you're kind of out of luck because then you might not have enough. What they should do is they need to trade guys that have one year left or have guys that may not be useful for them in the long run. I'm talking about even me, a Steven Matz, if you have to, a Zach Wheeler. Struble Cabrera at shortstop is on his last year. So there's, there's, these are guys who are producing for the Mets that could, Mets could get decent guys in return and maybe even make them better in the future. Interesting points. I mean, it'll be a long future. <laughs> the Mets really have not been good since their playoff run in 2015, so it's been a couple years, and uh, you think Cespedes will be able to return to what he was? Depends if he can even get on the same page with management and anyone in the organization, because it just seems it's his word against everyone else's on what his, foot or, his feet are like, and it's just terrible. Interesting, interesting. Eric, big Red Sox fan. Yeah. The AL East probably the hardest division for the Yankees and the Red Sox right now. The rest of the teams, you can pretty much forget about them right now. Don't forget about the Orioles. Thank you. Oh, make a big, right big now. comeback coming for the Orioles right now. Only about 40 games back. I'm looking for a big push. Uh, Eric, I want to know your opinion on the Red Sox-Yankee rivalry right now. Uh, it has been four to five in favor of the Yankees, but the Red Sox have six of the nine games coming up at home. And I think... On paper, uh, the Red Sox have more talent, but the only, their only uh, Achilles heel is their bullpen. Joe Kelly and Tyler Thornburg, two of their marquee relievers, have ERAs around seven this year. It's pretty is, bad. Uh, which is just unacceptable for a team on pace to win over 100 games. And that might not even get enough to secure the division with how good the Yankees are as well. That's All right. Well, we're getting a call right now. This is Jaden from Long Island. How are you doing today, Jaden? Hey uh, man, I'm doing well. I just I just got one quick question. I love the show, by the way. Driving to work every day, listening to the show. Great show, great Thank show. Thank you. I just got one quick question. What's up with my boy Gary Sanchez? Not hustling and now he's on the DL? What's going on here? Don't even get me started on Gary Sanchez. Lazy play. After uh, a really bad injury, he was playing so well, gets injured. It just shows, like, the Yankees are a team right behind the Red Sox. I believe they had the chance to catch up with them and take that division spot. So, you know, just watching Gary Sanchez not hustle at all out there when he knows his team needs to make a push to get that first place spot, it's just disrespectful to the team and all of his fans. The laziness is quite laughable. I saw a comparison of Brandon Nimmo, who got hit by a pitch, be almost equal with Gary Sanchez, who just walked, I mean, who, uh, who had to run out for a pit. A bit. It's just, it's laughable that this is the effort he's putting in when his team's trying to compete with the Red Sox. All right, uh, I hate to cut all of us off. We have to go to commercial break. Eric, any last thoughts? Uh, no, take it away, Dan. All right, so thank you, everyone. Uh, we'll be back after this break.